Russell Westbrook, Russell Westbrook. No one touches him, you do what I'm saying? Personally, um, realistically, he's like, to me, he has an argument as being a top five uh, point guard ever. Yes. I have, personally, I have Steve Nash over him just because they were put, put in the same situation. But you can't even really compare him, though, because you ever know the team on OKC was built around Russ. He had little help. Like, his, his I'm talking about specifically 2016-2017 season where our second best player was fucking Steven Adams. Like, Steven Adams. And then you paired him with Paul George. He's so inconsistent. You can't trust him as a second option. In that case, he was about, I, w- I would say he was a second option. Yeah, I, w- I would say he was. But, um, couldn't really trust him as a second option, so it was like, see what I mean? It was just, it was just disaster. And yeah, bro. Uh, but yeah, let's just get straight to it. Uh, how good was Prime Russell Westbrook? Before we get started, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Help me get to. <laughs> um, let's say. What 320? We are at 316 right now. Let's get this vid. Also, another thing, we've been doing this wonderful. Yeah, you know I mean, elegante on the uh, like button. Let's get this bitch tough. Cool five, cool five. That's me. Prime Russell West. No one touches him. I bleed this. I mean, I bleed Russell. I'm dead in the grave, six feet under, toes in the Everyone sand. Type the shit. I mean, who reminds him most of himself is Russell West. That's the biggest compliment like ever. And just like Kobe, Russ is one of the most polarizing players in NBA history. A guy that averages ten assists and gets called a ball hog. Someone who wins an MVP and gets called a loser. A superstar Crazy, who gets called a locker room cancer. So, Crazy how dog. good was Prime Russell Westbrook actually? Amazing. With the fourth pick in the 2008 NBA draft, the Seattle Supersonics select Russell Westbrook from UCLA. But Russ never played in Seattle because two weeks later they moved their franchise to Oklahoma yeah, City okay. and became the Thunder. When he first got to the NBA, Westbrook was still the same guy he was all his life. A point guard with bad court vision and a shooting guard without an outside shot. But his havoc wreaking energy and unreal speed are what separated him from every other player and made him special. Got no one could slow him down. Russ would grab the rebound, turn on the Jets, and dunk it on the other end in less than four seconds. In one moment, you'd shake your head in disappointment after a bad turnover, and in the next one, you'd shake your head in amazement after one of Westbrook's signature dunks (gasps) through traffic. Russ was always Russ, and there was nobody who was going to turn him into a methodic and poised point guard like John Stockton or Jason Kidd. In his third season... what? He's better than Jason Kidd, though. He's way better than Jason Kidd. I hate that... Bro, it's not a comparison though. Jason Kidd's I wouldn't say he sucks, but he is very overrated in my opinion. From what I've seen, he's a sh- comparing him to Westbrook, bro, is like comparing a I don't know, just something superior to something inferior. You do what I say. Like, it's not a comparison, in my opinion. Westbrook. Nah, it is impressive though. That Jason Kidd was able to bring what twenty nine win team to fifty two in a finals appearance back to back. That's very impressive. But all that tells, all that goes to show is they were just they had everything. They just needed one piece. It's still very impressive though how how much of an impact he made that quick. That's very impressive. But I don't became an all star. He had had very good points and assists. You see what I'm saying? In his fourth year, the Thunder made the NBA Finals, with Westbrook playing a spectacular second round series against the Lakers. Of course. Then, in the finals against Miami, the main narrative surrounded the LeBron versus Durant matchup, and rightfully so. Russ wouldn't be Russ if he didn't put his imprint on the series for better or worse. In the pivotal game four, Westbrook scored 43 points. Then took some awful shots when the game was on the line, and Miami took a 3-1 lead. In game five, Russ shot four for 20 from the field. And the th- but talk about KD though, because I'm pretty sure KD shot this horrible this game too. Get the fuck out of here! Like they they be on that. Bruh. 
While most of the world blamed James Harden for a bad performance, Westbrook had his own share of critics. Yes, you can tell they don't even 27, like 6 and 6 in the finals at the yeah, age of 23, yeah. which was astonishing. But still, why did he take three shots per game more than KD, who was much more efficient yeah, in a reigning three time crazy. scoring champ? But at that point, that's not Russell Westbrook's fault. That's the coach, right? That's the coach. That all has to do with coaching, that has nothing to do with Russ. So your point is invalid. <laughs> like that Despite ass. the bad shot selection and losing the championship, everybody believed that Russ, KD, and Harden would become a dynasty. But the trio would soon become a duo, as James mm. Harden was traded to the Rockets. Fuck. Even though trading Harden would soon prove to be the biggest mistake yes. in OKC history, KD and Russ were more than capable of running the show. In 2013, Oklahoma won 60 games in the regular season Crazy. and secured the number one seed in the West. In game three of the first round playoff series against the Rockets, Patrick Beverly collided with Russ and the Thunder it's superstar me. fell to the floor in Fucking pain. His fist was torn, but he still finished the game and scored 29 points. However, after the game, he was ruled out for the remainder of the season, after which many people asked the same question. Will Russ regain his athleticism of he and fly will. above the of rim like he would. used to? Or will he suffer the same fate as Derrick Rose, another superhuman point guard who never fully recovered after his knee injury? Yeah, this was also the first he, time Russell... Comment down below. Is he the biggest what if of all time? Personally, I... Uh, is he... Yeah, I mean, Westbrook I think it's fair to say. Injured. Dating back to high school, he never missed a single game. It's said that after his first knee surgery, Derrick Rose was afraid to step on the treadmill. And Westbrook? Well, after the initial surgery to repair his meniscus, He's Russ right came on. back even faster than everyone on, expected dog. and was still playing the only way he knew how, at 100 miles per hour. Come but on. because of his <laughs> injury, his knee didn't fully recover, and he needed yeah. two more surgeries Come before on, the 2014 man. season. You break it, you take it. Trade in any I phone in any roll, condition at Verizon bro. and get a new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6. Damn. $10 can help fund powerful ads. To I hope nobody's locked in on this bullshit. I hope everyone knows both sides are fucked. Like we are, as Americans, we are screwed. Reach undecided voters. Hopefully, like Russ we recovered screwed, to the playoffs, man. where he showed that his athleticism and spirit were intact. He fearlessly attacked the basket at full speed, like we've grown accustomed to, Duh. and he helped the Thunder reach the conference finals. But yep. against the Spurs, the Thunder lost in six games, despite Russell averaging 27, six and seven, which led all scorers in the series. In 2015, it was KD who suffered a season-ending injury, and that. Fully unleashed yeah. Russ. We didn't Westbrook make playoffs. averaged a career high 28 points per game, we which led the NBA though. in scoring, along with seven rebounds and nearly nine assists per game. But without KD, the Thunder missed the playoffs by one yeah. game. In 2016, OKC bounced back, winning 55 games and making the conference finals against the Golden State Warriors. In game four, Russ led the Thunder to a dominant victory with 36 points, 11 I'm rebounds, and 11 dead, assists. Bro. OKC took a 3-1 lead in the series, and it seemed like they Six were on feet. course to another NBA Finals clash against LeBron. But, but in the next life. three games, Westbrook shot 35% from the life. field and less than 30% for three, with five turnovers per game. The Warriors bounced back and won the series in what was the most... But no, you don't want to talk about... KD though, KD did bad too, because it's this 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 is a thing about offenses like this. Our offense solely relied on Russ and KD. We had Roberson, bro. He was don't get fucked up though. He was a, a very great defensive threat, but offensively he offered nothing, like literally no help whatsoever. It was literally just KD and Westbrook, bro. So it's easy to stop two rather than five. We didn't have a full team. You see what I mean? Five turnovers per game. The Warriors bounced back and won the series in what was the most Kane disappointing bitches, loss in bro. Thunder history. With Kevin Durant entering free agency, the whole world wondered if he was going to stay loyal to Russ in Oklahoma City or sign with somebody else. I, he, if, if he got it, it's just I got to keep on bro. I'm sorry. If he got a championship here, bro, he would be top five. I think that's fair to say. He would be top five. If he got two, he would be top five. I, I, yeah, two. If he if he uh if he won one here, he'll be top ten, closer to top five. Be like seventh or eighth. 
I think that's very fair to say, bro. He ruined his entire legacy with this. OKC fans, KD chose the worst possible option, signing with the Warriors, oh my God, a team that man. just defeated OKC. It still hurts. It Westbrook still was livid with hurts. KD's decision and his lack of communication about leaving the team. This oh, all goes, and I hope I have no friends. But just like it was in 2015 when KD got hurt, Russ was now fully unleashed to dominate. Freed yeah. of sharing the ball with Durant, Westbrook had the best statistical season in modern NBA but, history, but, but, averaging 31.6 points, 10.7 rebounds, and 10.4 10 .4. assists. I know that off the cranium. Game. Ever, average, a triple yeah, double for the season. In 2017, I memorized this shit, all sorts dog. of records. He had 42 triple doubles on the season, including Gosh. three 50 point games with a triple double. He had the highest usage rate in Come NBA on, history man. and led the NBA in score. Jason Kidd ever did some shit like this? I don't think so. I don't think so. Right. Yeah, I mean. But in the playoffs, the Thunder quickly lost to the Rockets in five games. Yeah, Rockets. In a series, I knew it. they never looked like man, they could hit, win. I watched that live. Russ averaging 37, 11, and 11 in the series. You shot OKC horrible. never played as a team which proposed another big question. Was Russell actually helping his team with all those triple doubles? And despite averaging more than 10 assists have to talk per game, soon. was he actually a selfish player? No, the answer to that is yes. They don't like him, obviously. Okay, let me talk let me talk my shit. Okay, probably I would say probably the only real argument of him stat padding was his first season of his triple double. The only real argument, let me be honest. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. But the other two seasons, they just needed that from him. The team has the team became dependent on his triple doubles. Now they needed that. You can compare it to 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 uh his legend. No one no one talks about this. His legendary run with Washington Washington Wizards. My gang brought an 11 C team from from the uh, uh from uh of the All Star break. After All Star break, they they went up to eighth. To get into playoffs, like that's just what the teams needed from him. It's not. I mean, I guess you can say his stat pad and okay, cool. But why isn't nobody talking about Luca's stat pad? That's just what the team asks asks of him. You see what I'm saying? It, bro, people would just be just shitting on Russ. Like I don't get it. Like no. Statistically crazy. speaking, OKC won over 80% of the games when Russ averaged a triple-double. Like, come on. And they were a worse team when Westbrook was on the bench. Like, come on. But on the other hand, his hero ball wasn't ever going to work in the playoffs. It wasn't. And that's not just because of Westbrook's weak supporting cast. It was doomed because of how he treated his supporting cast. Westbrook would often have the ball 90% of the entire I mean, possession. And then... Who, who's going to have it? Roberson? Like, what is this nigga talking about, Even bro? If he passed the ball, it would be a hot potato pass at yeah, the end of the would, shot clock. It would. Other than Russ, would. nobody had the chance to get into any kind of rhythm. And that killed the flow of the I game. mean, who did we have, though? Who did we have? Our, I'm talking about specifically after KD left. Because I don't know. I, I know we got Paul George bitch ass, but that's when I kind of locked out of it. Our second best player was Steven Adams. Fight averaging like, come on, 10 bro. assists per game and getting his teammates wide open. We got Carmelo shots, in the third. Like, that was ice really cold good. and barely remember what a basketball felt like. Nah. With an offense that's so heavily dependent on one player, even when Russ would sit, the other players started forcing shots just to feel relevant. Throughout NBA history, this ball. kind of hero ball never really yeah. worked. When Steven Oscar Robertson Adams. averaged his triple double, he lost the first round of the playoffs. The same with Jordan when he averaged 37 points per game. Or Kobe when he averaged 35. Steven Adams. Sure, there is an I mean, argument uh, that Russell Steve won Nash. a ton of games by himself, playing one on five and dominating. You could also say that he had to play that way yes. because he didn't have great teammates. He did not. And that it was the only way for them to win games. I'm not talking about Serge Ibaka. I mean, Ibaka the shot blocker. I mean, I fuck with Serge all day. But I'm talking about like, roll, we didn't have a bench. We didn't have, we didn't even have starters, bro. Like, Role players were starters for us. Like we had nobody, and he still was able to wield us to a, to a playoff appearance. Like to me, that's very impressive. But the and you're not even meant to be a first option, and you're still doing shit like this. To me, that's best players impressive. are always making their teammates better. 
Despite Westbrook's individual brilliance, his teammates wasted away next to him, and their skills were reduced to setting screens and catch and shoot three pointers. I mean, not to mention boxing out. So we had no shooters. For his we had no outside threats. What are we Westbrook's gonna do? Rebounds were uncontested. So he tried his best, trying to set him up. For his this is chatting right now, dog. It's pissing me off. It's a regular season award. And the man was absolutely brilliant in the regular season, doing something we haven't seen in the modern NBA. But after the 2017 season finished, the world realized that Kevin Durant was right for going to Golden State. Right, KD yeah. was better off in a system where everyone he touches like the ball, and, and where he didn't have to shoot isolation shots over two defenders. Westbrook proved that he can be dominant without KD. Duh. One of them lost in the first round, while the other won an NBA championship. Like, you see how biased he is, though? He went on a superstar team. Like, what is he talking about? He's not going to mention that, though, that they already had a championship before him in a finals appearance. Went to a game seven the year before that, gang? Oh, my mother. You went to the team that beat you in a game seven? Y'all was up 3-1? And you talking like this, dog? But you, want, you don't want to mention none of that. But you want to you wanna act like he just went to a team naturally on some shit. Fuck out of here, man. Like, if I ever saw you, bro, be, be warned. In the NBA, what I'd say, why not? After he won the MVP, game, bro, Westbrook averaged a triple-double in three of the next four seasons. Each time, his teams lost in the first round of the playoffs, and nobody cared too much about his triple-doubles. In 2023, Nikola Jokic this was 12 crazy, assists man. shy of averaging so a triple-double right for the season. And he's a perfect example of why all stats are not created equal. Jokic gets everybody involved. He doesn't force shots and doesn't pass to get the assists, but to make the right play. Joker's teammates cut and move all the time because they know right that they're going to get the ball. With he Westbrook, it's often just getting about. out of the way and waiting in the corner. He don't know well, what the fuck he's talking about, brother. Basketball completely changed since he came into That's the what NBA. They needed from him. stayed the same. He was always a shoot first, ask questions later kind of player. A guy who always goes 100 miles per hour for better or for worse. A guy who does things his way and can't be tamed by coaches. But when he was in his prime, nobody can argue that this wasn't effective and that Westbrook wasn't a hell of a player. I don't really care what nobody else thinks about my game. As long as I'm okay and satisfied with what I do and bring to the table, I'm gonna keep busting everybody. <laughs> He's one of the six rest, right? best transition players in rest. NBA history on a list that includes young Charles Barkley, Jordan, LeBron, pre-injury Derrick Rose, and Giannis. His trademark move when he gets the rebound, dribbles the whole length of the court in four seconds, and then dunks over two defenders was mesmerizing. <laughs> Poetry in motion that would bring the whole crowd to their feet. Despite often hunting for rebounds and teammates letting him get the ball for triple like, up. Just imagine this tame, though. Like this is this is him when he was just, ooh fuck it, just imagine this tame like refined, and I, I that's why I'm so happy this Nuggets, cause it's gonna work, they're gonna force him to refine his game, uh they're gonna force him to fit their basketball, and they have a great coach they have the best and and the best player in the league wanted him that's the biggest compliment you could have, and that's a that's the biggest compliment you need towards your game. You see what I'm saying? It's safe to say that I Russell can't is wait to see him on the under ever at his position. I feel like position. he got to play when his best basketball. his career, Russ will have over 25,000 points and 10,000 assists. Beat it. A list that includes only him and LeBron. Westbrook is a two-time scoring champion and a three-time assist leader. Another unique feat. He also made nine All-NBA All teams, NBA, with yeah. only 25 players in NBA history who have made 10 or more. By sheer numbers and accolades, Russ is among the 15 or 20 best players of all time. And throughout Thank you. NBA history, there haven't been many players. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't. I'm being honest. He's, he's not, he's not. I want him to be. If he got a chip, he will 100% be top 20. But right now, I got him more so like, oh, that dude got a ring. He won a championship. Holy shit. Who is this? Comment down below. But right now, I got him like top 30. Uh, closer to top 30, I should say. He's like More 31. More polarizing than Westbrook. But yeah, I don't like that. I, I don't, res I know I talked a lot, but I don't respect that, that just shitting on Russell Westbrook like he's not like, he's not that guy.
Like the only thing he's not he's missing in his career is literally a championship to make him a top twenty talent. And I'm not talking about a championship where, but he he she shows that he still has value to a team. You see what I'm saying? I, the uh, a fucking contending team wanted him. This is the second contending team that that sees his value, that sees the value he brings. The he he walks into a fucking into a game. It, immediately, there's a momentum shift. He he does like a crazy momentum momentum dunk, get the crowd riled up. Like, bro, that's value. You see what I'm saying? That that sh sh shit like that can spark twenty point comeback. Shit like that. He he be the head of that, and nobody want to mention it though. But I will, Russ. I will. You know I say I'm Russell Westbrook till I'm dead in the grave, six feet under type shit. Dexter.